I'm Robert Field, and I am fishing my way across Mississippi, bouncing between state parks in my RV and checking out all the best fishing holes, cultural hotspots, and delicious eats along the way. Screaming. This time, we're searching for a world record in the best crappie fishery on Earth. Our guides Aaron Barton and Josh Kwong are helping us target these tasty critters using super effective lures and advanced technology. Nice. Cheers. Cheers. Then we're hitting up the wildlife extravaganza before enjoying a good old fashioned southern fish fry. You're watching Field Trips with Robert Field. All right guys, well good morning. It is bright and early got up at four we are meeting Aaron Barton at 5 30 here on the, kind of the end of Sardis Lake right next to John W. Kyle State Park where we're staying so got about a five minute drive we're gonna meet up with him get in the boat we'll go over the plan a little bit more but we got a full mission with objectives and a plan we're gonna be kind of doing two different ways of fishing this morning and chasing these world records for the state of Mississippi so I think we're both excited just still waking up a little bit see what happens there she is Sardis Lake gorgeous gorgeous morning what I want to do first is I want to catch fish first and foremost we'll figure yeah. out some of the other stuff later you know, this time of day, the white bass and the crappie should be coming up to feed off the shad. So we're gonna throw some shad imitators. We've got heavy beetle spins, light beetle spins, and then some chrome jigs that, and they just drive these fish crazy in, uh, right. this, this time of year. So why'd we stop here? What are we looking, what are we looking at here? So we've got this high wall here, which is indicative. You can actually tell what the bottom of the lake looks like uh, by looking at the shore, if you can extrapolate that. And so we've got this steep shelf and it kind of leads off to a flat. And of course, we're at the mouth of the creek. So we kind of got all the things we're looking for. We've got points, we've got dramatic underwater structure, and then we've got travel routes to and from creek channels to main lake. So we're gonna try to throw some jigs and spinners out here this morning to see if we can get on that single pole artificial bite. They'll come up, uh, chase the shad early in the morning, late in the evening, and they're right back down to the bottom. So it kind of gives you a window where you can maybe catch them on top waters or something a little bit more shallow. Yeah, I've seen a few little swirls on the surface. I don't know. Oop. Damn. There we go. Crappie number one. Didn't take too long. No, that was just right under the boat, hanging out there. Yeah, Daddy. Okay. Made hey, that look too easy. Um, so you were, you were literally just kind of dragging it, or? Just, I dropped it and I started talking to you guys. <laughs> I'm just holding it there. That, you just got the, to the right depth, I guess. the beetle spin, though? No, that was no. the chrome jig. That same thing, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Um, oh, <laughs> we got to get the skunk off one way or another. I'll take it. First blood. Monster. And I was just listening to you. I wasn't really doing anything. I, I did drop made. it. I dropped it down at the just bottom. Drop it down and just let it hang there. It's boring. Uh, but just a wee lad. That's crop. It's a little better one. It's got a mouth on it. It's a much better one. Dude, nice. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. Boat. There it is. Boat. There it is. You think that's two pounds? Uh, pound and a half. Pound yeah. and a half. I mean, he's definitely dinner size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, we'll take him off. Good job, brother. Appreciate Man, it. taking the full boat skunk off. Yep. <laughs> First one's the hardest. So we're out here in 20 foot of water. I mean, you you see just based on the, the white on the graph that there's bait all over. What we're looking for is a condensed white blob. And what that means is those bait are either being chased or in the presence of predators and so they're tightening up for protection. I think we're gonna make them. Alright guys so if you ask me there's kind of an easy way to catch crappie and a hard way and normally if you were to book a trip with Aaron or, or most crappie guys they're gonna do the easy way with you. If you're just trying to fill the freezer trying to get groceries they're typically gonna troll 
eight rods off the back and now you can either use live bait with that and that's what we did last year when we were in Mississippi or you control a variety of artificials and that's what Aaron likes to do but he'll do a mix as well. Brooks and I did that last year we had a blast caught some good fish but we told him when we met up we don't want to do that we want to do it the hard way. So we're gonna be running around with one rod each pitching at fish that we find on the live scope on individual trees throwing a variety of lures all artificials trying to catch these fish the hard way just for the added challenge and then on top of that we're gonna be trying to go for several world records like we talked about two pound test four pound test the different line class world records we got maybe a shot at some catch and release world records potentially if we get this far down the list, we might try to bust out the fly rods and get some fly world records. We'll see how it goes. We're, gonna, we're just going to play it by ear. But I'm excited. This is going to be fun. Aaron was kind of like, oh, got his work cut out for him, putting us on some fish, doing it the hard way. But it's going to make it so much more fun. To me, it's a lot more rewarding. It feels like I made that happen. But like I said, if you want to book a trip with Aaron and just go out with your family or your buddies and just catch a bunch of fish, he'll do it the, the trolling way. And that's a great way to put some fish in the freezer. But we're gonna get after it. Sun's starting to really kind of get up in the sky now, so I think we're gonna make a move. See what happens. If we want to fish over here single pole, we kind of got to get while the getting's good because as you can see, that wind is blowing into that bank. Not as much of a problem when it's running perpendicular to the short side of the lake, but when it runs down the length of the lake, you've got 15 miles of unobstructed, just a wind tunnel, and you've got this Bernoulli effect where the wind kind of comes through here and it'll actually accelerate to force the same mass of air through a smaller space. But not only that, the waves will stack up on each other. So it only takes about a five mile per hour wind. It's just, yeah. it'll white cap for... Reason of the waves. All right, guys, so as you can probably see behind me, we are switching tactics. We've left the open water where we were finding crappie this morning relating to big bait balls, big schools of bait that they were kind of corralling up. And we have moved to, quite obviously, the flooded timber. And this is, to me, kind of a much more typical crappie fishery, crappie grounds. Crappie tend to relate to vertical structure, things like trees, stumps, stuff like that. And so this is, in my experience, in crappie fishing, is kind of typically the kinds of areas that I'm in. Like, I don't think that's a crappie. But it's a fish. It's a ways out there, it's hard to tell. This is something a little heavier. Well, all it has to be is two pounds, buddy. Yeah. It feels like two pounds, but I could be wrong. Oh, it is a crappie. Nice, not as big as I thought it, it oh, was. That's a keeper all day. Every but yeah, day. nice. Uh, there you go. Just crappie. Oh. You use twelve. Man, not as big as I thought. It was feeling big. It's light tackle here, four pound test. Well, that might be Rob's first keeper of the day. We're, we're about to find out. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. Good to go. First keeper of the day. Not a world record, but that's dinner. Nah, I think that's fish. Yeah, yeah that's there he is. Float. Crappie? Oh, just came off. Oh. No, he's still on. Never mind. Oh, oh now he came yeah. off. <laughs> Look, and he's just sitting there. Yeah. Look, okay. he's still sitting there. Now, good point on that. So if that would have happened. All right, guys, so Mississippi in late July turns out pretty hot. So we just took like a two hour break, re regrouped, cooled off. We got something to eat. We're back out here expecting to fish till sunset. Aaron's friend Dennis Barfield here came and brought us some two pound test line. We didn't have any, we couldn't find any before this trip. He brought us some two pound tests so we can go after the line class record crappie on two pound tests. I think we're gonna get it done. So huge shout out to Dennis here. He brought us what we needed here last minute, but we're ready to go. Aaron had a little accident at lunch. His shirt got messed up, so he changed shirts. <laughs> He's out there waving. But yeah, feeling good, got some food, cooled off. It's still hot. We got plenty of daylight left. We're gonna get after get back on some fish. This bird is not happy. Looks like a bunch of fish up under this osprey nest. Mama Osprey is not happy. We're over here. I think these crappie down here are eating osprey poop. 
looked like she was gonna swoop in on it. Dude, I, I told you I'm not a bird guy, really. If that thing were to swipe, buzz my head, we'd definitely have to leave. I don't, I don't play that. Grace, she can keep an eye on us. Like, do you mind? Look at her. She's like, you got all these trees. You just had to pick my tree. I mean, I'm crawling this beetle spin. There he is. There he is. Nice. There you go. Man, oh, that'll yeah. keep, that looks like you a think so? Probably right about 12 inches. Man, out here, no, no trees. Kind of out here in the middle of nothing. Yeah, I mean, he definitely, I think he followed it for a while. Good gosh. All right, more than twice, you're just playing with it, Brooks. I like to play it. So, 12 is that line. No, yeah, wait, uh, <laughs> isn't that close? Yeah, I it, mean, it, it's it, close. Isn't that the 12 line? Yeah, you're right. The 12 line's after it, so yeah, it was 11 and a half. Okay. 11 nice. and a half, all right. It's okay, though. We're here at the heat of the day. Toughest time of day, man. It feels good to I see mean, a see a fish really? come up. All right, guys, so we're working on the, the two pound test crappie record. We only got to catch a one pound white crappie to get this record, but this line is like spider silk. I was just testing the drag on one of these reels and tried to pull the line out to see how heavy the drag was and it just snapped on me right away. So this is gonna be a game of finesse. I got the drag now, feather light, and we're cooking these fish around stumps. So it's gonna take a little bit of luck. If these fish try to get me wrapped around this stump, I'm not gonna really be able to stop them with this line. So I get now why there isn't a record for two pound test crop. This is not gonna be easy. This IGFA certified two pound line it's two pounds at most. I just broke it by basically sneezing on it. So this is going to be a challenge, but we're going to try to get it done. I'm going to commit to this two pound line and see if I can't get my first IGFA all tackle world record and, and bring one home to Mississippi. All right. So basically we're using this Garmin live scope and we're right now we're running past some of these more isolated trees. So you can see over there, there's hundreds and hundreds of trees all right next to each other. And then here we got some of these kind of onesie twosies, little Oh yeah, and they, these are stacked. So they're out in kind of open water where there's not much cover. And so the few pieces of cover there are, theoretically every fish around here would want to come over here and relate to it. So we had a theory, we had a plan, came over here and checked all these trees and sure enough, the scope is loaded with fish down there. Lots of bait as well as some groups of crappies. So looks like it may pan out. We got to get some fish in the boat first. Yeah. Fish on? Yep, 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 yep. yep. Uh, my name is Aaron, we got fish on. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, oh, careful, careful, careful. No. Yes, sir! <laughs> yes, sir! Dude, that's a tank. Hey! Oh, it just came out. That's hey. two pounds all day. <laughs> that's, hey! That's gotta be two pounds, right? <laughs> no. Oh, baby. All right, uh, my name is Aaron Barton. <laughs> No, we did not. We lost him in the net, but that hoop popped out. I'm gonna take a picture of this one. Uh, Aaron Barton, 325 a day. Just give me a shout whenever you're ready. Okay, okay thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it. All right, well, uh, is it, are you Lauren? I am. Okay, I'm Aaron. Nice to meet you, Lauren. Nice to meet you. I'll give you a call, and I appreciate it. Okay, thanks a lot. you're welcome. Bye-bye. Well, that didn't just sell a trip. <laughs> we always do that. So. Dude, if that's two pounds, that's a potential world record, right? It's a four pound test. If it's two pounds. He hooked it and everything. Record. Yeah, that's it. There was no assist. A close up of the fish's nose and the tail on the measuring device. The angler with the fish and the rod and reel used to make the catch. Okay. Those are our photographic requirements. Okay. Yep. All right, so we're getting some pictures. This is a requirement for the, the world record. There it is, first big fish of the day. Woo. We've caught some crappie, got a couple keepers alive well, but that's the first, I mean, that's a slab. That's what you call a slab. I was actually kind of bottom bouncing a uh, beetle spin, which I've never done, but you never know. You just gotta try things. You never know. Out here in the timber, found the first big girl of the day, and this is this could potentially be the world record Woo. for four pound test on a white crappie we here got... in the great state of Mississippi. We're gonna see, we got a lot to do to kind of verify and certify this record, but we're going to do it. Heck yeah. Great job, man. Appreciate it. Great fish. Well done, sir. All right. Got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's crappie. He might be a pound. Yeah, yeah, let's net. I can't. 
I don't know. <laughs> that might be it, dude. That might be it. Yeah. That might be it. Yeah. So this might be our new world record two two pound test. It looks like a pound. I don't know. <laughs> that might be our record fish. Sweet. And now there's a lot we got to do for this. We got to cut off the line. We got to document it. We got all kinds of stuff to do. Certified to scale. make sure we Witnesses, get this. Yeah, we got to take it to a certified scale. There is a long list of things we got to do. He's 12. So all right, so he's legal. So there's at least a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. You. Might be it, boys. That was a light tap, man. Subtle, subtle. I just barely felt, if I hadn't been holding the line, I don't think I would have ever felt it. I felt just the slightest tick in my fingertip. So same pattern we found early this, late this morning. These isolated stumps that are out here away from the kind of main patches of stumps seem to be where we're finding fish. That's two keepers in the box. One, a potential IGFA world record for two pound test. We'll see. But we're gonna stick with this. We got a pattern dialed now, and we're just gonna hit all these isolated stumps that are by themselves out in open water. Let's keep keep moving along. Just because there's, there's a little stump down there, and there's a fish sitting down on that stump. 30, 30 foot out. 40. Got him. Yes, sir. Feels pretty decent, too, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eh, might be a little short. Yeah, nah, he'll be short, but man, again, thumped it. Thumped it hard. Absolutely. There you go. Good one for Aaron. Do you think that'll go 12? Oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> On the bottom. Oh, it's a pretty good one. Pretty good one. Not two pounds, though. No, not a world nice. record. Another crappie, nice one. Aaron here called it out on the live scope, told me exactly where to cast, and beauty. Yep, yep, yep. There we go, another one. Another one just found another isolated trees, and I mean, we definitely figured out a pattern with this. The big, huge groups of trees, Nice. not really getting it done, but these isolated trees are at least holding the fish that are willing to eat. Another Excuse keeper? Me, right? We're having a grind through them right now, it's hot. We'll add to the fish fry. Oh, got him, there's another one. Here we go. Oh. Yep, that's another one. Feels better. Got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Feels pretty decent, too. Yeah. Shoo. Yeah. I'm getting on. Brooks is on again. Brooks with the hot hand. Dragging that beetle spin. Three bites and, and three casts. Yep, there you go. Oh, they're in here. Yeah, 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 yeah they're in here. That's oh, that's two fish and two. Good <laughs> job, man. Now I'm we're talking. A, I'm just a bass fisherman. Throwing the biggest lure in the boat. <laughs> oh, and I got one. Double, nice. Doubled up. Doubled up. That's, I'm just going to oh, flip it. Boat flipping it with four pound line. Four pound test. Hell yeah. Dude, that looks like, yeah, yeah, yeah we found him here. There we go, buddy. Hey, nice. cheers. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, mate. Nice work. Doubled up, bud. Yeah. Oh, oh these are both keepers. They're both keepers? It's about a pound actually. <laughs> All right, guys, super fun day on the water. We caught a bunch of crappie doing it the hard way, single pull, casting at these fish, finding them on the live scope, identifying different trees that had fish, fishing for them in open water. We did a lot of different techniques today, a lot of different presentations. It was fun. It's what Brooks and I wanted. It was a challenge, but we got plenty of fish. We got two pending world records, but either way, super fun day. Now it's time to clean these fish up. We're gonna cook these fish up for you guys. I don't know how we're gonna do it yet, I think we're gonna do them at Aaron's house. We'll get to know him a little bit better. Josh, I think may show up. I think a few people might show up. But first we gotta clean these fish, and then we'll meet you guys in the kitchen after this. It's been a long day. And now we're just separating the flesh from the skin. I like to leave the rib bones in because if you just cut them out diagonally, like this, you're taking a lot of meat out, but you can come through and just fillet that out. Yeah. It's killer dough. It's gonna be good. Oh yeah. This is the last of the work really. Uh, finding them is super hard and then catching them's not too bad. Cleaning them sucks. But then when you get to eat them, that's when all that pays off.
So you know you're in a place that really catches fish when you've got it's about this, fish. Yeah. You got this grinder. The fishing community, for yeah. sure. I don't think I've ever seen one of those in North Carolina. Yeah, that's nice. Make us some crappie skin boots. There you go. Done. There you go. The ladies love them. Easy peasy. This is definitely the best cleaning station I've ever seen. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. <laughs> Y'all take your crappie. I mean, this is a crappie leg. Y'all take your crappie seriously. Well, look, it drives a lot of economic impact to the Mississippi regions where we have these crappie lakes. Especially and North Mississippi. Too. For sure. You've got these four big flood control reservoirs in Arkabutla. Uh, Enid that you fished last year, Sardis this year, and Grenada. They bring people from all over the country, all over the world, looking to catch you know, really world-class crappie. And so stuff like this is just a byproduct of what people would expect from those types of fisheries. All right, World-class. I love this place. We're two for two here in North Mississippi, going for crappie, last year and this year. All right, so before we cook up these crappie that we caught with Aaron, we have come here to the Clyde Muse Center in Pearl, Mississippi. I don't really know what this event is, but it's called the Wildlife Extravaganza. There's all kinds of stuff going on, and our good buddy, Brad Case, who we'll be fishing with at our next stop, is here teaching kids all about flipping and pitching and casting. There are booths from all kinds of outdoor companies, wildlife rehabilitation groups, and educational stuff teaching the next generation about the importance of protecting our natural resources. This should be a good time. Let's check it out. So how often do these bite people? Almost only never. Bit only bit you once. I guess that makes me feel better. So this is a ball python with the Mississippi therapy animals. I don't know what kind of therapy you need to hold this guy. Or um, whenever we go to the school for the blind and deaf. School for the uh, blind and deaf. The blind kids really love the feel of the snails. I can see that. You're braver than me. <laughs> I was kind of thinking anywhere but the face. Yeah. Very cool. I'm bonded with when we watch movies. Nice. They'll just fall asleep. And they don't have eyelids, so it's hard to tell if they fall asleep. Right. So, He'll just stop moving. I'm like, okay. you know, you know when I fall asleep, I'm He's snoring. They don't good. snore either, I guess. <laughs> they fart. They fart. <laughs> That's a fun fact. That's a fun fact. Fun snake fact. Thanks so much. What was your name? Avery. Avery. Thank you so much. No problem. Very cool. All right, so we're here with Katrina Miller. She runs Mississippi Therapy Animals. They're here at the Wildlife Extravaganza, bringing some pretty cool and exotic animals mm -hmm. here for the kids. What do you guys kind of do in general besides this event? So we are a nonprofit charity that actually trains different animals for what's called animal therapy, okay. which means that uh, we're mental health based. These animals actually are qualified and trained nationally to go into facilities to support people. Nice. Um, so yeah, so we have exotic reptiles, farm and domestic animals. Well, look at this. Here we are at the wildlife extravaganza here in Jackson, Mississippi, and now these Kangaroos are not native to Jackson, Mississippi, as far as I know. I have tangoed with these guys in Australia, and they're super sweet. I did get bit by one in Australia. Now you're being kissed by one. But it was a lot bigger than this, yeah. And pretty cool opportunity for kids to come out here and learn all about not just native local animals, but also about some more exotic animals. And they can make out with a kangaroo right here in Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> Very intimate. What a cool experience for the kids to get to get to see this. I mean, it's cool for me, and I'm a grown man. I feel like the kids are gonna love this. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah. And Very so cool. our bird, our Amazon parrot, you'll meet soon, um, is up here, and she is hilarious. Nice. So she's. Oh, I'm she's excited fun. for that. Well, we'll come back and we'll come check it out. Yes, I'll feed Twix. <laughs> yeah. Twix. <laughs> So cute. And my horn showing. Yeah. You're looking good, man. You're looking yeah. Good. Did you grow up and were you born and raised here in Mississippi? I was or? born and raised out of Brookhaven. So Brad, how'd you get involved with this wildlife extravaganza? How'd you end up doing this? Many years ago, I say many, I was supposed to be with a uh, table exhibitor here. Well, they pawned me off to the uh, the people that run it 
And they said, we just want you in your jersey walking around. Well, after you walk this half a day and you start saying, they gotta be something better to do. And I found the kids pitching and a little BB shoot. I said, well, dang, that's great. I love to get the kids to do stuff. So I was in there with a jersey getting them to pitch. And then all of a sudden more kids started coming in because they said, somebody's in there with a jersey. We're not sure who it is, but he's got a jersey good and he's helping us pitch. So the next year I took it over and I had a couple other pros come in, semi pros come in, they helped pitch. And I said, I got the little watch. And I said, you know, we got to change this up a little bit. I says, I put the hula hoops out. If you get the hula hoop, you get a piece of candy. You get in the bucket, you get a bait. You get in the coffee cup or the three inch coupling, you get into a cap. So, and it's just progressed a little bit. But then also in that change up, I started telling the guys to back off as a parent with them. They said, what do you mean? I said, you teach the parent what you want the kid to do. And you let the parent, the dad particularly, work with the kid to keep it going. Yes. I said, I said, now you're getting interaction from both the dad and the kid. You're watching them what they're doing. The dad's seeing the excitement in the kid when they get it in one of those, the hula hoop, if they're like up to four or five, six to nine into the bucket and they get a pack of worm and then the nine to 14, 15, they go all the way and try to get a cap or something. And usually the, anywhere from the nine on up, they do it on their own. They're pitching it like crazy. Yeah. But it's those young kids that just, that we need to groom to want to be outside, to, right. to enjoy it to be outside, instead of playing on a computer all day long. Getting like, them off the Xbox. Getting them right. off that Xbox. Yeah. And it makes that difference. And I've picked up a BB shoot now to get them used to shooting and handling a firearm. We talk about understanding the safety of shooting a rifle, and not even only that, but the safety of using a rod and reel, because you got a piece of lead on the end or hooks, yeah, right. and on that, paying attention and then uh, hand grabbing, so that now they get the use to see how the catfish are. <laughs> got him. We're about to give Brooks a year to noodle a catfish. Yeah, Brooks is scared, but this eight-year-old girl doesn't look that scared. There it is. And be able to touch a fish or hold a fish, even if they don't necessarily grab it, they can get pictures with it, holding this big fish, this big catfish. And they have now they have that memory of it. And they're up there like, wow, this is so cool. I did all this. Now we have a pet and zoo added to it that the kids come up and see these exotic animals that they don't normally see, that they would never, or if they see, it's in a zoo and they can't touch. Right. And these are all stuff they learn about and they see at school and all. It's very cool, man, getting kids excited about the outdoors. And I think even more important, you kind of get an opportunity to teach them to respect the outdoors. That's it. And do it right. Very cool. And it's pretty good, fun watching them and watching them, how excited they get. Oh, and dads, I'll give you a pointer. If you're carrying your son fishing or daughter fishing, they walk in front of you to the site, not behind you, in front of you. That way that rod hook doesn't catch you square in the back when they're walking behind you. <laughs> Speaking from experience. Pro tip. <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh. Did he bite you? <laughs> that one thumped. <laughs> that one went for the thump. The first one didn't. That, that one said, let me get a bite of that. <laughs> oh, what's that? A little bite of this Carolina boy. Oh, snack. There you go. Oh, oh. getting a little, getting a little ornery. You ready to go? You just gotta commit. When he bites you, you just gotta commit. Yeah, when he bites, you just pick it up and go. Grab it. There you go. You gotta hold him hard. <laughs> so you may, I think you need to switch hands, buddy. That'll be easier. Gives you better grip. Brooks is helping these boys try to get their first catfish, noodling. There you go. Yeah. That's a big one. <laughs> nice work. Great job, bud. I think my work here is done. Is that your first time noodling? <laughs> my first time noodling. Well, how cool is that? The wildlife extravaganza. I love any event that's getting kids excited about the outdoors, teaching kids to respect the outdoors. Brad Case teaching these kids how to cast and pitch and flip and giving out some prizes for that. That was a blast. Really cool to come check that out. But now we're gonna get back and get to cooking. So now we are heading to Aaron Barton's house to fry up these crappie. He said he's gonna fry them up the way he does it normally. So we're gonna see how he likes to cook these fish up. They are delicious. I think Josh, our kind of support craft captain, is gonna come out there and meet us. Should be a good time. I'm ready. I'm hungry. You hungry, Brooks? Oh yeah. Oh yeah.
All right, here we are. Let's get in there and start cooking. <laughs> Did he say something about tying up with the pink boa? He did, he did. Ooh, is this my gun? <laughs> this guy's silly. The rope, oh yeah. yeah. Howdy, what's up, man? What's going on, brother? Going? He really did bring the bow. I thought he was joking. Oh, that was like really oh, gross and weird. Uh, I mean, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Avocado oil. Avocado oil, it's got a high smoke point, neutral flavor. Yeah. I like cooking with it. And so you're not deep frying these, you're just kind of pan. Pan, pan frying, frying them. That's kind of. right. Gotcha. We're gonna roll. And I'm gonna add a few other dry ingredients to the batter before. So you're gonna use this Louisiana fish fry and do like a wet batter with it. I've never done that. I'm excited to try this. You can fry a shoe and make it taste. That's <laughs> Old, Bay. Old Bay. Can't go wrong. It's a little, little Eastern Coast. Shore flavor, yeah. East Coast kick. And then one more hemi that truffle. Woo! That sounds good. It's the bomb. Put it on my peanut butter sandwiches. Your peanut butter sandwiches? Well, I'll put it on everything. Uh, gotcha, Even gotcha. Food. You're being Hyper dramatic. Bomb. Yeah, that's right. What we got going on here? All right, so when I cook these fish, I want them to taste like fish. However, I have found if you put just a little bit of Dijon mustard and a little bit of buttermilk in there, it really imparts kind of a richness to it. A little bit of tang. And I'm not trying to overpower the fish by any means. I'm not going to put any sauces, but that's just something we've found over the years can kind of add a uniform taste to it, make them taste really nice. Time. Ready? I'm going to start. Yeah. Fish with the wet batter on it going into the dry batter. Simple, easy, and I feel like you can't screw this up, especially with crappie. It's good, flaky, white meat fish. This is as fresh as it gets, short of eating it raw out on the boat. Stay out of her way. She does have the knife. She does have the knife. Oh, fancy. No, no not that fancy. <laughs> we got Josh here on tortilla duty. Very important. That's good. Some of these bigger fillets, it does not hurt to cut them in half. Uh, all that will do is kind of let you keep your crisp even throughout. <laughs> Golden, crispy. This is gonna be good. So Aaron just taught me something new, that cocktail sauce is just ketchup and horseradish. I had no idea. What I like to do is take one piece out that's kind of representative of the sample size. Do a little Let taste cool. test. Do a little taste test. Not so much for the, the flavor. I just want to make sure it's cooked <laughs> all the way through. Good. That's fantastic. The fish is done. I'm going to let it stay in there for just another 30 seconds or so to kind of crisp up the outside of the batter. But can I try it? Yeah, please. <laughs> huh? Huh? Oh. Thank you, bro. <laughs> How did you do that? I got a hot mouth off. Oh, it's good one. Yeah, it's Steve. Oh, God, this is hot, Robert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had, I should have warned you. He had a cool corner. I'm crying, but that is delicious. <laughs> In fact, when I'm frying a lot of fish, I end up like pouring the grease out halfway through cooking it and just starting Sorry. over, which is a pain. Yeah, right. 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 It's like, man. There's something I'm missing. It's like Van Gogh. Or Picasso, except we, we don't have all you know, four eyes. <laughs> I feel like I've been in a, bean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little sauna retreat. My, uh, yeah. uh oh, uh oh. How's that? I'm ready for the rest of it. Yeah, not terrible. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron, for, for putting us on, for cooking them, the whole thing. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming out and uh, sticking with us. It was an epic odyssey <laughs> of heat something. and sweat. And I lost 15 pounds of water weight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No I don't think I've sweat that much for that long. Oh, no. It felt good this morning, though. Yeah. yeah. Like nice. It ain't like making puck puppies at the uh, catfish house. No, no it's not. Okay, Josh. Yes, ma'am. For fish tacos, how do we, it's not a normal southern fly, right? Don't it's literally know. just cabbage. Okay. No, it's too late for that. I'm not the guy, I'm not the guy to ask about that. I'm gonna get a beer. Can I get anybody a margarita or a whiskey drink? There you go. 
I would get the ones that are a little more brown and color uh, on the adaptive uh, learning. Field trips with Robert Field. Yep. Well, you can check it out. Yeah. <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning. And that was good, man. I mean, I could turn it. Just one? Yeah. One? I'm, I'm one I got, for 15. I got a few. I don't have any big business. Yeah, well, I was over 14, but all from the like 20, 30, 20, 200 pounds. One tarpon. We each want to catch. One tarpon. Before we die, die no matter when. Hey, it's no big deal. You want to sit down? Yeah. You're in front of the camera. Because I got the camera going. Well, I'd say our first stop here on our Mississippi tour, our second annual Mississippi tour was a success. Yeah. That was killer. So much fun hunting down those crappie one at a time. We did it the hard way, but we got it done. The fish was delicious. Aaron is such a cool guy. Him and his wife and Josh were so good to us, so kind to us. Really made our first stop here in Mississippi incredible. If you want to book a trip with Aaron, you can do it. BartonOutfitters.com. He'll take you out fishing for crappie the hard way if you want, like we did, or he'll take you out the easy way, do some trolling, and really help you fill the freezer. Can't recommend that guy enough. He's just so nice, so knowledgeable, and just really showed us a good time. But that's gonna do it for our time here in northern Mississippi this year. Our crappie stop is done. Next up, we are heading down to the capital, to Jackson, Mississippi, which I've never been to. I don't think. Uh, nope. We've never been there. We're heading down there. We're gonna be doing some topwater bassin using frogs on the lily pads with a good friend of ours we've known for a long time, Brad Case. Really excited for this. We're gonna, we'll see what else we get into down there around Jackson. But for now, we gotta hitch up the rig, get out of here, out of John Kyle State Park, and hit the road and head south. You ready to do it? You know, All let's right. do it. All right. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank, and it ain't that long, till I'm back at the farm. Bye.